Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Cowan and today I'm going to chat about scaling and polishing in veterinary dentistry. Using an ultrasonic scaler with appropriate tips for supra and subgingival scaling, followed by hand scaling, is the most effective way of removing calculus. After we have removed heavy calculus using forceps, we then need to move on to mechanical scaling, first by using an ultrasonic scaler and then following on with a hand scaler. Ultrasonic scalers benefit the patient's gingiva as well as reducing operator risk fatigue that occurs through hand scaling. There are two types of ultrasonic scaler that we'll discuss today, the magnetostrictive and the piezo. Ultrasonic scalers operate at a high frequency of between 20 and 50 kilohertz. When we use an ultrasonic scaler, water lavage helps to remove plaque and wash away debris in the periodontal pockets. Cavitation also occurs when bubbles form in the coolant spray. When these little bubbles collapse, they disrupt the cell walls of harmful bacteria within a 1 to 2 millimetre proximity. This then promotes improved dental mouth hygiene in your patients, particularly in their deep subgingival pockets. The use of CLS with its chlorohexidine will also reduce pathogens and pocket depth. The first category of ultrasonic scalers I'll discuss is the ultrasonic magnetostrictive scaler. This is our most efficient system and it's the 4212. The magnetostrictive ultrasonic scaler uses a rotational stroke pattern. All the surfaces are active through power dispersion. Magnetostrictive scalers convert their energy to vibrations from rotational stroke patterns of the unit's metal ferret rod. All surfaces of the tip are active for removing debris. The 4212 has a very small tip motion and this means that less damage will be caused to the patient's enamel. It rapidly removes calculus deposits from all tooth surfaces and it's even safe to use in periodontal pockets with up to 13 millimetres in depth. It has a lightweight handpiece with a finger on off switch, so this then eliminates the need for a foot pedal. It also comes with two tips the universal and the perio. The universal tip can be used for the removal of moderate calculus, both supra and subgingively. And the perio tip is particularly useful in subgingival pockets as deep as 13 millimetres. As we mentioned earlier, energy dispersion for the magnetostrictive scalar makes all its sides effective. The greatest amount of energy is produced at the tip. Therefore, the tip should never be directly applied to the tooth surface. It's important to use the scaler correctly to benefit from its unique feature. Always use the tip parallel to the tooth, with the side of the tip on the tooth. Do not use the tip as a pick or chisel at right angles to the tooth as this will scratch the enamel. Animal enamel is considerably, considerably thinner than human tooth enamel and therefore more prone to damage. Heat is generated from the tip. Although it produces less heat than other machines and is therefore less likely to cause unintentional thermal damage to the pulp. Always keep the tip moving and never spend more than 10 seconds on each individual tooth you can return back to the teeth to finish off scaling. You only need to apply light pressure to the tooth. Just sweep backwards and forwards as though you were painting the teeth with a paintbrush. You can use a tip to probe deep pockets, but always use parallel to the tooth surface. As a rounded titanium tip operates in a 360 degree rotational motion, Easy access is guaranteed as all the surfaces are active and therefore there are no dead zones. It is important to use the coolant flow on your scalar control correctly. Adjust the spray control to achieve a fine mist. We recommend that you add diluted CLS to your water supply on your dental machine. 
When CLS is used at the correct dilution with dissolved water, it is guaranteed not to block the water lines or coolant system on your dental machine. CLS is a uniquely formulated dental solution containing chlorhexidine, which is designed to reduce burr cutting time and mask odours. For the piezoelectric scalar, energy dispersion differs from the magnetostrictive scalar as only the lateral sides are effective in removing debris. Strokes occur in a linear pattern. Energy is converted by crystals activated by the ceramic handpiece. The most effective portion of the tip is the last 2.4 millimetres. Our P6 piezo ultrasound scaler works at a frequency of 30,000 kilohertz and a tip amplitude of 0.2 millimetres. This means that the higher the frequency and the smaller tip amplitude, the more efficient your scalar function will be. Generally, 25,000 kilohertz is the minimum power recommended in an ultrasonic scalar. Ideally, the scalar needs to be fitted to the compressor and water supply of your dental unit. This will then provide a nice even supply of water to the scalar tip. You can use a pump up water supply, but this must be used carefully as the uneven pressure can lead to excessive heating of the handpiece. Ultrasonic scalers are, have interchangeable tips. A perio tip can be used to scale to a maximum of two to three millimeters subgingibly, but we must remember never to use the beaver tail tip under the gum line as this will cut off the water supply to the scaling tip and cause thermal damage to the gingiva. It's really important to remember to monitor your scaler tips regularly for wear as all scaler tips wear out. Tip guides are available for our 4212 and our piezo tips. Time and money are important factors in our practice. Worn tips result in inefficient scaling and this will then cause frustration and prolong scaling time. The effect of prolonged scaling will then of course result in increased anaesthetic and procedure time and both of these will then result in loss of re revenue. It's important to understand that when tips are worn it reduces vibration to the tip as well as poor displacement of water to aid in tooth cooling. Hand scaling is recommended after mechanically scaling first to remove the majority of the plaque and calculus. Hand scaling is performed with a super gingival scaler. The double ended scaler is used to remove plaque and calculus from the tooth surface above the gum. It works well in tight occlusal spaces. This is a triangular instrument with sharp cutting edges. Scalers are designed for supergingival use only and must never be used subgingively. Hold the scalers and corrects using a modified pen grip. Gently hold at the serrated end with the thumb and index finger. Place your middle finger near the instrument tip. This allows you to feel for vibrations which, which signal residual calculus or diseased rough tooth root surfaces. Rest your ring finger and little finger on the table for support. Improper instrument grasp can lead to ineffective removal of debris as well as repetitive motion injuries. Subgingival scaling is the removal of subgingival calculus from the root surface. Inadequate removal of calculus will cause the disease process to continue to deepen into the periodontal pockets. Use a universal or Gracie correct for this procedure. The universal correct has a cutting edge on both sides and the Gracie correct has a tip angled at 90 degrees to the shaft with only one cutting edge. To the user correct subgingively, insert the correct into the sulcus and place the blade between 45 and 90 degrees to the tooth surface. Insert the correct into the sulcus convex at end first to minimise damage to the gingiva. Use one stroke in the coronal direction. Pull firmly against the tissue. This will remove inflamed tissue and subgingival calculus from the pocket. 
These hand instruments must be sharpened after each dental procedure. Please see our sharpening video on our education page on our website for detailed sharpening techniques. Polishing our patient's teeth is mandatory. We must polish all supra and subgingival surfaces. A common misconception in veterinary dentistry is that ultrasonic scaling leaves the tooth and root surface rough. However, if we're scaling properly, you shouldn't damage the enamel. We need to remember that tooth enamel is the hardest substance in the body. So if we think about it, a rubber cup containing prophy paste cannot smooth enamel. However, it is really important to finish the procedure with polishing as this removes any remaining plaque or biofilm that sits under calculus. We can use a fine to medium grade paste. Polishing is typically performed with a profi cup on a slow speed handpiece with a 90 degree angle. The handpiece should run at a slow rate with no greater than 5000 revolutions per minute. Any higher than this speed can cause thermal damage to the tooth. We also need to ensure that we've got adequate profi paste in our cup because if we use insufficient paste, this will then overheat the tooth. If we use a light pressure on the tooth, this will flare the edges of the prophy cup so the polish will reach all subgingival areas. We need to polish our teeth for a maximum of five seconds to avoid overheating and then return back to that individual tooth. The R and R oscillating disposable profi angles that we can see below have a 60 degree reciprocating back and forth action of the profi cup. This helps to prevent muzzle hair from being tangled in the cup and also has continuous contact to the tooth surface. The reciprocating action reduces heat and friction on the tooth and it stops profi paste from splattering. Here are the ordering codes for the items mentioned in this presentation. If you require any further assistance or have specific questions relating to our product scaling equipment, please do not hesitate to get in touch and one of our IM3 colleagues will be more than happy to help. Thanks ever so much for listening today. Bye.